Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna talk about the prairie dogs. I like this beautiful little creature. So if you're ready to get started, let's get into the video. One of the less uplifting facts about prairie dog colonies has to do with their present range, due to urban expansion and the agricultural sector encroaching on their habitats. Prairie dog colonies have fallen by around 95% of their historical size. Black-tailed, white-tailed, Gunnisons, Utah, and Mexican prairie dogs are the five separate species, and they may all be found in North American grasslands. They are mostly found west of the Mississippi River in the United States. Synonyms is the name of the biological genus that encompasses comparable groups of animals and includes prairie dogs. The translation of this term, which is Greek in origin, is mouse dog. It resembles a little little man's dearest pal. Early settlers really linked the prairie dog's warning sounds to dog barking. As they set out across America in 1804, Lewis and Clark made note of the animals in their diaries. The moniker prairie dogs or, maybe, the cuter mouse dogs has stuck through time as a result of their characteristic barking sound and their grassy environment. It's possible that if you spend enough time in a prairie dog village, you'll witness them do the wave. One prairie dog will yip loudly, jump up onto its hind legs, and raise its arms. Each prairie dog in the community will take turns doing the motion after one does so, since it appears to be contagious. While entertaining to observe, it also has a significant social impact. Prairie dogs must always be on the lookout for other creatures that could be after a good prairie dog dinner. They remain in continual contact with one another to do this. They each take a turn doing the wave, which is their signal that everyone is paying attentively. A prairie dog utilizes its unique, high-pitched warning cry to notify others and recognize predators using its dichromatic color vision. Once the threat has passed, another call is placed. The squeaky cries of prairie dogs are monotonous and straightforward to the human ear. Recent studies have discovered, however, that these sounds may contain very detailed information. For instance, prairie dogs may communicate with one another to warn one another when a tall person dressed in blue is approaching their burrows. The Squiridae, family of squirrels, includes all five species of prairie dogs. Additionally related to them biologically are groundhogs, chipmunks, marmots, and woodchucks. The fact that prairie dogs kiss and nuzzle each other as they explore new places is one of the nicest things to know about these extremely sociable creatures. Although they don't have lips to lock, they commonly rub noses and teeth together to welcome one another. They may recognize one another and determine if they belong to the same family group in this way. A prairie dog's breeding season has a significant impact on its daily life. While they only procreate for two to three weeks, prairie dogs mate between March and April. A female prairie dog will give birth to three to four puppies following mating. These pups will remain in their burrows for up to six weeks after birth and are fully hairless and blind. Female prairie dogs are fiercely protective of their offspring and may attack if they perceive any threat to their puppies. In addition to nursing them, collecting grass for their burrows, and guarding them from danger, female prairie dogs take care of their young. They occasionally care for young prairie dogs that are not their own due to their maternal instincts. According to some experts, this would point to a type of collective breastfeeding in their species. Other authorities disagree, claiming that they just rear the pups after mistaking them for their own offspring. The females in prairie dog groups are frequently connected to one another and were conceived in the same litter. While the men born into the group roam off into other groups to avoid mating with their kin, they remain with this group for life. Burrowing underground gives prairie dogs the much-needed shelter they need from a variety of predators and the elements. These rodents are skilled architects, and they construct their burrows with chambers or rooms that have certain functions. Some rooms are used as nurseries, while others double as their nighttime sleeping quarters and protection throughout the winter. The nursing rooms often occupy a deeper subterranean location than the sleeping chambers. It's interesting to think that they could even have toilet-like chambers. 
Other creatures, including prairie dogs, also benefit from their elaborate tunnel systems, they serve as safe havens for them. Other ground squirrel species, mountain plovers, snakes, and burrowing owls also use prairie dog tunnels as their homes. Similar to chinchillas, another rodent species that inhabits dry environments, prairie dogs do not take water baths. Instead, they roll in the dust for approximately five minutes at a time, taking dust baths. They eliminate fleas and other parasites from their skin and fur in this manner. Prairie dog colonies function like little communities. Coteries, which are made up normally of one male, two to three females, and the young, are how they live. They reside in settlements that can have several families and cover a large area of the country. It's also fascinating to notice that when prairie dog residents of the town get together, they would nuzzle rather than give each other what appears to be a kiss. The group eats together, looks after one another, and offers mutual protection. The prairie dog consumes plants and leaves since it is a herbivore. Even if they don't kill animals to eat, they will nonetheless kill any animal that is a threat to their ability to survive. Prairie dogs may exhibit a lot of territorial behavior, and they can go to considerable measures to defend their home range. They frequently murder squirrels in the vicinity and dispose the bodies right afterwards. Rarely, they could even decide to consume a tiny portion of the prey they've killed. The normal habitat of prairie dogs is one with little to no regular rainfall. Since they are herbivores, they will use vegetation to help them keep hydrated, including cactus, roots, and grass. They don't need to drink water since they can retain all the moisture they need from their herbivorous diet. But now if you don't want to miss something, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.